Hey everyone and welcome back to my new and returning player's guide to World of Warcraft. Today we are going to be covering the leveling process including the basics, solo leveling, group leveling and also unlocking mounts and how the new zone scaling system works. So let's do the basics. Right, you've made your new character, you've been running around your starter zone and you've been doing a few quests. Let's explain what is next. So. Your main goal is to level up your character. In the process, you'll unlock new zones and continents until you eventually find yourself at level 120 in either Kul'Tras or Zandalar. It's a really big journey, but don't worry, it will all come naturally to you once you're used to the leveling. So you mostly level up by doing quests, as you've probably noticed so far from your starter zone. Now, each zone of the game is packed full of quests, but uh, it might be confusing knowing where to start in a zone. Well, thankfully, the quest board is a new feature that is there to help you, so you can find these in in main cities and in taverns, they will suggest zones for you to travel to, and they'll also give you an introductory quest that'll get you started on the right foot in those zones. Now, zones typically have a main quest line plus side quests, and you can check out your progress through the zone's main storyline by hitting the L key to show the quest log, and then looking up at the top right of it where you'll see how much of the zone's story you've completed. Now, once you've finished a zone, you'll usually be given a breadcrumb quest that'll lead you to another zone or even a few other zones. And um, you can get that, or you can just go to a quest board and see what your options are. Let's quickly cover getting quests. So quests, of course, come from NPCs with an exclamation mark over their head, and you'll see those all over the place if you look at your mini map and then if you press the M key you'll actually see areas in um, whatever zone you're looking at uh, with available quests and they'll be marked with an exclamation mark. So that is how you get quests in World of Warcraft. There is something else that is really important to explain though and that is the major changes that were made to leveling earlier on in 2018. So previously zones had fixed level brackets say level 38 to 42 and if you were outside that level range then mobs there they'd either be far too powerful or far too weak and the quests wouldn't give you any experience. Well Things are very different now. The entire world scales to your character's level with a far larger bracket. So a zone nowadays will, as an example, scale from level 20 to level 60, meaning that you can visit that zone at any time and do the content um, as long as you're in that level bracket and you'll find that it is perfectly scaled to your character. So as an example, previously a level 40 character would not be able to go to Darkshore because the quest would be too low of a level. Well, now a level 40 character can go to Darkshore and quest to their heart's content. What this does is it gives you a lot more freedom to visit the zones that you find appealing. Now you can check out the various zones and their leveling brackets by hitting the M key and hovering over them on the world map. Now there is one broad distinction that does still exist and that is based off the new levels and locations that were added by each expansion. So 1 through 60 takes place on Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms. Then 60 through 80 is a lot more freeform now. You can either go to Outland or Northrend. Then 80 and 90 can either be done in the high-end Cataclysm zones in Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor or Pandaria. Then 90 to 100 is on Draenor, 100 to 110 is on the Broken Isles, and then of course 110 to 120 is on Zandalar or Kul Turas, depending on your faction. So that's the broad way that quests work and how the new zone scaling works. So let's talk about the leveling process. So if you're a solo player, you're mainly going to be doing quests. Usually you'll be led to a quest hub. You'll pick up the quests in that hub, you'll head out to the world, you'll do the quest, you'll come back and you'll turn them in. This will get you experience and gear. Now, as you level up, you'll unlock more content and more of your class. You'll be able to head to more and more dangerous zones as you level up. You'll be moving from expansion to expansion until you hit the most recent content of Battle for Azeroth. Now let's talk about the gameplay features that you'll unlock over this period of time. So at level 10, you unlock class specs. Now, as I covered last week, specs dictate the role and the play style of your gameplay. Now your first talent will allow you to customize your character within your chosen spec. Then further talent rows are unlocked as you level up and they will give you even more customization and you'll also unlock loads of new abilities. Now talents allow you to customize your character. As an example, do you want to do more area of effect damage? Maybe you want to focus on single target damage or maybe you want to add in a new gameplay mechanic for your spec as well as choosing between different survivability and utility options. Now, if this is your very first character, one thing you might notice when you're running around the world is there's all these people with this shiny gear. What is it? Well, that's heirloom gear. Now, heirloom gear is purchased on a high level character, it's unlocked, and then it can be equipped by a lower level character. It is special armor that scales with a character's level and it provides a experience boost. Basically, it's a way for existing players to level up new characters, often referred to as players by alts, a little bit faster. So if you're a new player, it's really not something that you'll have to worry about, but you'll probably see the benefits of it later on. Now, quite a lot of other content will be opening up to you as you level. So you can talk a guard in a city and they can point you towards 
towards profession trainers. Now, professions allow you to craft items and gear as well as gather natural resources in the game. At level 15, you'll unlock the dungeon finder feature and uh, the initial few dungeons. And then as you level up, you'll get access to a larger range of dungeons. Now, completing a dungeon takes a group of five people and that includes a tank, a healer, and three damage dealers. So it's easiest to do this though with the group finder feature. So what you wanna do is hit the I key, you wanna select your role, and then you want to queue up for a random dungeon. Now, if you have friends that you want to run the dungeon with, just invite them to your party before you queue up for the dungeon. But don't worry, I'm gonna talk about dungeons uh, just a little bit on in this video. You'll also soon unlock PVP content so you can do random battlegrounds, which can be a really fun break in pace. And I actually really find that playing against other players helps me learn my class uh, more and become a better player. So solo levelers can do all of this content. If you don't have friends available to play with you, don't worry, the group finder will take care of finding people for you when you want to do dungeon content. But next, let's talk about group leveling. So I mentioned dungeons, which are grouped content. Uh, now leveling with a group of friends generally is pretty simple in World of Warcraft. You just want to invite friends to your party. This um, will be great because you'll find the quest progress is shared. And then if you you queue for a dungeon while you're in that group you'll all be queued together and it's really handy if you can feel the tank and a healer because then your queue time will be nearly instant because those worlds are always in really high demand now dungeons are a great source of experience and um, you'll get a bonus for completing the dungeon, you'll get a bonus for doing a random dungeon through the group finder, and then you will also get experience from any dungeon quests that you have, and these can often be found inside the entrance of a dungeon and uh, be picked up once you're teleported in. So next, I just wanna give you some dungeoneering guidelines. So a dungeon has a, you know, a group that's a tank, a healer, and three DPS. Now, generally the tank sets the pace for the group. This means that they initiate combat, and a big part of their job is managing enemies and guiding the group through the dungeon. So it's always best to have hang back and follow the lead of the tank and, you know, never really pull enemies that a tank hasn't engaged with. And then while this is going on, the healer will be trying to keep everyone alive. Um, and that's kind of the flow of a dungeon. Then once you get into a boss fight, you just want to be, you know, looking around you. The bosses will be doing abilities that will mostly be avoidable, but you do want to pay attention and, you know, avoid them and learn the mechanics of the fight. If you're able to do all that right, then you'll find yourself clearing dungeons in no time. And it's a great way to practice for the end game of World of Warcraft. Then of course, you can also take your group into PvP and compete in battlegrounds. And uh, finally, you will see that there are some quests that are recommended for multiple people. You can, of course, always try to solo them and uh, see what your luck is like. So through doing all of the quests and the dungeons, you'll be leveling up pretty fast. And one of the most exciting parts of leveling is unlocking mounts. So let's talk about that feature. These are really big milestones and there are five ranks of mount skill. There is apprentice, journeyman, expert, artisan, and master. Now, apprentice lets you use ground mounts at a speed that's 60% faster than normal. Journeyman bumps that up to 100, and you can get apprentice and journeyman at level 20 and 40, which isn't too long after you start playing. Then expert riding lets you ride flying mounts at 150% speed. You'll get that at level 60. And then level 70 brings in artisan, which lets you fly at 280% speed, but costs a pretty penny at 5,000 gold. And then finally, master riding is available at level 80, and lets you fly at three 310% speed. Your first goal will be to hit level 20 and pick up Apprentice Riding. You'll actually get the breadcrumb quest for this once you hit level 20, and that will um, you know, take you to your um, riding trainer, and that will be near somewhere where you can purchase a racial mount. Now, past that, there are loads of mounts from loads of different sources, completing achievements, drops from bosses, from crafting, from various promotions from the store, and many others. There's actually like 400 plus mounts in the game. Now, some mounts are ground only, but many others are both ground and flying. And then mounts will move at a speed that is based on your riding skill. So flying caps out at 310% speed with master and ground caps out at 100% with journeyman. However, there are some items that can boost your mount speed from say Battle for Azeroth blacksmithing. So there you go, that is pretty much everything that you need to know about the leveling process in World of Warcraft, including all the stuff that you'll unlock and essentially what the journey is going to be like. So. With that covered, thank you very much for watching this episode and be sure to check in for the next one where we're going to talk about the communities and social features of World of Warcraft. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.